Hello viewers and welcome to the part 4 of the lecture series on static timing analysis. In the previous video of the part 3 of the series, we have seen that the setup and hold times of a flip-flop can be negative and also under what conditions does this hold true. So now we'll see a brief introduction of what is STA and calculate the maximum operating frequency by performing static analysis, setup analysis. So let's get started. One of the most important aspects of FPGA design or ASIC design is the timing analysis. Timing analysis can be viewed as a uh, timing verification method of digital circuit to make sure that the design is working at a rated, at a, at a rated speed without any timing issues in it. A digital circuit closed for timing will work at a specified frequency and therefore it will promise us three important parameters. That is P, power, performance and area. Uh, so basically we have two types of timing analysis in this. First one is the static timing analysis and second one is the dynamic timing analysis. In dynamic timing analysis, we apply real-time input test vectors to the input segment of the design and verify the output. So if we get the expected output at the expected time, it means that the design meets the logic functionality as well as timing of the circuit. So though STA looks perfect, it has got certain drawbacks too. Let us see. DDA takes a lot of time to verify the entire design because it can only apply, it can only verify that part of the design where the input test vectors are applied. And uh, DTA has a huge runtime. Also, uh, for, the, for a circuit having millions of transistors, it is very exhaustive for us to generate so many input test vectors and apply to it. So we go for STA. In static timing analysis, the word static refers to the fact that uh, it is performed in an input independent manner. That is, there is no need to generate input test vectors and apply it to it. Uh, here it performs uh, timing analysis on all the possible timing parts in the circuit of timing violations. And uh, there are certain violations, there are certain limitations for this too. They are, uh, it does not check for the logic functionality of the design. And it is generally not preferred for asynchronous circuits. In comparison to the circuit simulation, here circuit simulation is another word for the DDA, and for dynamic timing analysis. First one, it is a faster process because uh, since there is no need to simulate multiple test vectors, it stays faster as compared to DDA. Second, it is more thorough process. More thorough in the sense, it checks for the worst case timing of all the logic conditions and not just those sensitized by a particular set of vectors. It is more thorough. Next, we will see what are the steps to be followed in performing STA. First step, the design is broken down into multiple or different timing paths. And then, second, we will calculate the uh, signal time delays of all the paths. Third, we will check for the timing violation in each of the worst case conditions okay so one important point to be noted is that sta is performed only uh, to check for the timing requirements but not for the logic functionality okay now let us see the standard definition of the sta sta is defined as a method of validating the timing performance of our circuit design by checking all the possible parts of timing violations in worst case conditions okay don't worry let us visualize this this is a part of the this is a part of the uh, sequential logic circuit consisting of some flip flops some combination logic and uh, triggered by clock input pulse so let's say at a particular instant we have a stable data values as d4 d3 d2 and d1 at the inputs of the flops so on the active edge of the clock these flip flops pass the data inputs onto the outputs and start waiting for the next active edge of the clock. So, before the next active edge of the clock arrives, all these inputs, all these uh, outputs of the flops has to reach the inputs of the next respective flip flops. That is this. Okay, and this complete process should be completed within one time period of the clock that is t clock 
So here comes the role of STA. STA is used to ensure that the correct data is present at all the inputs of the flip flops at the activation clock. We all know that the frequency is nothing but the reciprocal of the time period of the clock. So here we take uh, so here we consider the maximum clock frequency. What is maximum clock frequency? It is the maximum frequency at which a circuit can operate without any glitches or violations. Okay. So as a technology is advancing day by day, we try to minimize the time taken by any device to perform its operation on time. And similarly, here also we need here also we need to find the minimum clock period uh, required by the uh, circuit so that it can work properly without any hazard and can perform all the operations in minimum time. Therefore, in order to find the maximum clock frequency, we need to perform something called setup analysis. Here we'll see many cases. So let us start with the ideal conditions. So what are ideal conditions? First one, ideal clock pulse, which means there should, there should not be any delay in the clock path. That is in this path. The clock signal has to receive, uh, has to be, has to reach at, at the same time at all the input of flops. Second, zero clock to Q delay. That is, uh, it is nothing but the flip flop delay. The time taken by the flip flop to produce the output on the active edge of the clock, on the active edge of the clock. It should not take extra time. Okay. And third one, setup and hold times are assumed to be zero. Okay. So the first flop is known as launch flop. The second flop is known as capture flop. Now, the time taken by the output of the latch flop to propagate and reach the input of the capture flop is nothing but the combination launch delay. That is T comb. So, on the active edge of the clock, the uh, flip flop passes the data input onto the output, and this output has to reach the input of the uh, capture uh, capture flop before the next active edge of the clock arrives. Right. So here we arrive at a relation that is T comp is should be less than T clock, or also we can say that the maximum frequency is nothing but one by T combination logic, one by combination logic delay. So let's say we have an example where combination logic delay is given by five nanoseconds. So the maximum frequency will be one by one by five nanoseconds. That is twenty megahertz. Okay. So let us see the first practical case with non-zero setup time. So let's say the setup time is three nanoseconds. Okay. So here the condition is that the data, the output data of the la latch flip flop, needs to be present at the input of the capture flip flop before setup time before the active edge of the clock arrives. That is this. It has to be present at this instant only, okay, in order to prevent the setup violation. So therefore, we arrive at a re relation that is T comp should be less than T clock minus TSU. See, this instant. So T comp plus TSU is less than T clock, uh, which can also be written as uh, F maximum is equals to 1 by T comp plus TSU. So for this particular example, we get 1 by 3 plus 5. 1 by 8 nanoseconds given by 125 megahertz is the maximum frequency of operation. Okay, so let us now expand this practical case by including clock to Q delay that is this time which is 1 nanoseconds and we also add some buffers here in the clock path that is the clock signal will take one nanosecond to reach the input of the clock input of the launch flip flop and the same will take three nanoseconds to reach the clock input of the capture flip flop. Okay, so here the relation or the equation will get altered uh, like this. See, we'll calculate that uh, amount of time from this to this. Okay, so D1, now the delta 1 plus clock to Q delay that is TC to Q plus the combination logic delay T com. Now this hole has to be completed before setup time of the clock. So T clock minus T set, but this clock is arriving uh, after delta 2, right? So delta 2. So if you see this properly, we can comprehend this by saying the left hand side will give you the data arrival time and the right hand side will give you the data required time. 
that is DAT data arrival time and the right hand side will give you DRT data required time so always remember the, the proper operation data arrival time should be less than data required time so we get TCOM plus TSU plus TCTQ uh, plus delta 1 minus delta 2 plus ND clock so which is nothing but the maximum frequency is given by 1 by uh, one by all this equation on substituting we get 1 by 7 nanoseconds which is nothing but 142.8 megahertz is the maximum frequency of operation so what if what happens if I consider a uh, clock clock frequency of 200 megahertz will the system work no it won't work because it is crossing the maximum frequency the system won't work properly okay let us summarize all this concept at one point so as i've already mentioned that uh, data arrival time d it is given by the left hand side equation that is delta one plus uh, clock to q delay plus combination logic delay and data required time drt is given by delta two plus uh, clock period minus setup time okay so for the proper operation of the circuit uh, in order to prevent the setup violation DAT should be less than DRT. Okay, this is important. Now we'll also learn few terms which will be important in solving direct questions. They are slack. Slack is defined as the difference in the uh, data required time and the data arrival time. So DRT minus DAT. This is in case of setup time because in whole time it will be opposite. We'll see that later. And next is a clock skew. Clock skew is nothing but the difference in the times taken by the clock signal to reach the inputs of uh, launch flip flop and uh, capture flip flop c this clock is reaching after delta 2 in case of flip, uh, capture and after delta 1 in case of launch so delta 2 minus delta 1 is nothing but clock skew okay so in our case it is 3 minus 1 that is 2 nanoseconds okay so this will uh, simplify our expression we can simply substitute this by delta uh, let us stop here and continue in the part 5 of the series i hope it is clear till now if you have any doubt please please drop it down in the comment section thanks for watching